This is Marcos Patchett, the nocturnal herbalist, and in this video I'm going to be talking about uh, ways to treat cancer and specifically a model for the holistic treatment of cancer that's addressing it on every level from the level of symptoms and symptomatic level all the way down to the level of sustaining factors and causes. Now disclaimer before I get into the video I'm not suggesting that uh, this model in any way means you can uh, neglect conventional treatment or conventional medicine. In fact, this model is, it's, and, and also I'm not suggesting this model guarantees success, but I hope you'll see as the video goes on that it stands to reason and that it is a model which should uh, enhance any chances of successfully uh, defeating cancer or uh, getting the best prognosis. And also it's a model that can be used by anyone, uh, by conventional oncologists um, or by complementary practitioners. So um, yeah, anyway, that's my position. So uh, hopefully you'll see what I mean. So this is going to be a long video. <laughs> so to get into it, um, it's basically uh, I kind of have a visual for this that I'll put on the screen now. It's like a, a pyramid shaped thing. So at the top, uh, in the top level, you've got uh, the first uh, degree of the disease or the acute symptoms. Uh, and you can see that the way that I hope you can see on the diagram that the top two levels of the pyramid, the top two tiers, which are labeled active and sustaining, uh, are apparent or visible. Uh, and the bottom layer of the pyramid, which is labeled foundation, is invisible. So these three layers of the pyramid represent both the treatment and the disease itself. And this model could really be applied to any disease process, any chronic disease anyway. Um, but for the purposes of cancer, the top layer, the active treatment, that would be the active symptoms of um, the disease, uh, particularly if there's an active tumor that's visible or any lumps or whatever, uh, also fatigue, weight loss, night sweats, that kind of thing. And in terms of treatment, this represents the sharp end of the business end of treatment. Any uh, element of the treatment which is designed to attack and kill cancer cells or to eradicate symptoms. So conventional uh, oncology and conventional cancer therapy tends to be focused at the top layer, the active treatment layer. So this is where you'd find your chemotherapy, your cytotoxic, that means cell killing drugs, or immunotherapy, that's drugs to recruit the immune system, or radiotherapy, again radiation to kill cancer cells, etc, etc. The second layer uh, would be sustaining. So Again, this is visible. So in terms of uh, the disease, these would be uh, things that are associated with the disease. So secondary symptoms. Um, so again, I've kind of mentioned them with the first symptoms, but weight loss and um, fatigue and um, any sort of secondary thing. So I, I guess d depression and mood disturbances due to having a cancer diagnosis quite likely, um, you know, anorexia, loss of appetite, um, possibly symptoms due to the medications such as nausea, um, vomiting, diarrhea, that kind of thing. Um, but in terms of the disease process, this represents um, obvious functional disturbances that may arise as a result of the disease. So, uh, for example, um, without, not, not, not due to the medications, but due to the disease, any secondary symptoms. So say, for example, if it's a lung cancer, there may be shortness of breath, breathlessness, that kind of thing, which may result in a hypoxic, a low oxygen state, which may cause fatigue, that kind of thing. Or you may have bowel cancer, you may have disruption of the bowel habit, uh, and so on and so forth. So, so uh, sustaining things. And in terms of treatment, it's looking at adjusting factors which sustain the growth of the cancer or which um, in some way uh, more obviously predisposed to it and often accompany the disease itself. I'll get more into that in a moment. So supportive treatment, but the symptoms 
uh, of, of those uh, it relates to secondary symptoms which are visible and apparent and then the bottom level of the pyramid is the foundation level and this really of, is invisible because this on in terms of the disease represents predisposing factors those elements uh, which contributed to the disease in the first place risk factors um, behaviors things like that and in terms of treatment they really are lifestyle things things um, sort of ad adjustment things so we can look at this pyramid in various ways the first is that the priority is obviously the sharp end the pointy bit at the top uh, the priority is to get in there with active treatment um, and then you want to secondarily introduce the second layer the middle layer the sustaining sort of uh, stuff to uh, support you through the treatment and to enhance the uh, fitness of the body and the person in general and then uh, as, a, as a third priority you need to get in with the foundational stuff but also I like this diagram because the the foundation is the broadest layer and I think the width of it uh, tells you two things one that it is the, it's it, it's the foundation it's the most important layer in a way even though it's the least acutely uh, important it's it's the lowest priority in terms of if you have a cancer diagnosis you want to get in and address the actual cancer first and so on it's in terms of long-term prognosis it's it's very important I read an article by the herbal oncologist or complementary oncologist she would just call herself a herbalist but she's been working with cancer for many years now I think 20 30 years Chanchal Cabrera and in this article I read this article today and in the article she likened cancer to a mushroom in a way she wasn't saying it, cancer is a fungus or any of that nonsense she was just making a metaphorical allegorical statement saying cancer is like a mushroom in the sense that the tumor or the symptoms are like the fruiting body of the mushroom but you've got this whole invisible mycelium underneath meaning that there are many many risk factors and sustaining factors underlying it so if you just pick the mushroom eventually another one will regrow in other words if you don't address the foundation the disease is likely to recur so I think this is very important and I think uh, modern medicine contemporary oncological practice is quite good variably but in general quite good at addressing the active you know it's very good with the chemotherapy and the radiotherapy and the surgery and attacking it and cutting the body of the cutting the fruiting body of the mushroom off it's not so good with the sustaining stuff it tends to just give a little bit of uh, supportive advice and maybe a few drugs to stimulate the immune system temporarily but it's not quite as good with that and it's pretty rubbish at the foundational stuff there are hospital dietitians and you know people who have some are of some use in those areas but um, my interactions with them in the past have not filled me with great hope and joy but um, that could just have been my particular experience in isolated cases but anyway um, so this is where I think complementary medicine ideally can come in. Um, if it's done right, it can help with those sustaining and foundational areas. And hopefully it can inform mainstream practice eventually and uh, mainstream medicine can get better at those, those areas too. So that's my little model that I'm going to be talking about in the whole video. Um, and basically, uh, is there anything else I wanted to say about that? Um, I guess in terms of herbal practice, my practice as a herbalist, um, there are like level one, the top of the pyramid, the active treatment, uh, as I say, conventional medicine really does address that. That's where its focus is. So, you know, that's where your standard chemo is, but there are some plants that can do that as well, uh, such as, and, and many, in fact, many of the standard chemotherapeutic agents were originally extracted from plants. So for example, um, uh, vincristine and vinblastine used in, in, I think, leukemia were extracted from uh, vinca major, the greater periwinkle, um, Taxol from the yew tree, Taxus baccata, um, I think that was uh, transformed in order uh, that it could be, so that it could be patented basically into, um, oh, that breast cancer drug. I'll put the name on the screen. I've forgotten the name of it, but it was originally Taxol from the yew tree. Um, 
it's a, it's an estrogen inhibiting so it's useful for um estrogen receptor positive breast cancer but anyway um and there are other plants as well such as thuja uh, or thuja arborvitae thuja occidentalis which contain cytotoxic compounds uh, the poke root phytolacca decandra phenomenally interesting a highly toxic plant which also stimulates um, a, a, a profound immune response in small doses high doses can cause severe colitis um, but these are all interesting plants and they are likely to have uh, proper cytotoxic or cancer cell killing efficacy but they are all quite toxic um, and um, in the main as certainly as a herbalist I tend not to use them there are herbalists who have a lot more experience with cancer than I do who do use them regularly I tend to focus on tier two and three of that pyramid on, to, on the sustaining and the foundational factors Um, I have had one or two clients in the past who have just who have wanted me to do everything because for various reasons uh, it have avoided conventional medicine um, in one case this was somebody who had gone for several years without uh, having any conventional treatment I think her tumor was beyond actual uh, conventional they couldn't do much for it by that point anyway and in the other case it was somebody who had uh, just decided they weren't going to do it whatever so um, in those cases I have supplied those kinds of plants and they were reasonably effective in neither case unfortunately did they affect a cure but in one of the two cases we did get a complete remission for about a year and at diagnosis that was a lymphoma that was um, deemed um, pro that the initial prognosis they said if she didn't take chemotherapy she would be dead within a year she lived another three years and a year later in fact she had complete remission to the extent that I have a letter from her doctor questioning the initial diagnosis so that was really positive but um, unfortunately it didn't stick basically the, the cancer returned um, and it eventually killed her which was awful but the the point was those plants do have efficacy um, but I don't want anybody to think that they are a magic bullet or a guarantee of a cure um, they are simply plant-based cytotoxics and they can be quite toxic um, so anyway that is if you're wishing to try and replicate conventional cytotoxicity with plants um, there's a we could debate that endlessly but anyway so there are plants that can do that um, but they have their own side effects and their own limitations and so on.